nothing annoys me more than um, conservatives who are conciliatory towards leftists and leftism, who play footsie with leftists and who are basically compromising uh, their, or what should be, their found out foundational conservatism um, as they approach leftists and I might add that I don't believe in conservatism I don't think that um, conservatism so called is a belief system um, it's basically a recognition of core values which is different to something you just learn in the classroom or can sit down and theorise about and I've dealt with that before, and I'll deal with that again. But for the time being, I just want to talk about conservatives who effectively are kind of what I would call faux conservatives or fake conservatives, which um, infects uh, a condition that infects uh, a lot of um, people in the ideological world ideological struggle against the left and the way I see it uh, amounts basically to capitulation to a to, to a to totalistic philosophy that they are facing that they don't recognise as a totalistic philosophy they are willfully fighting with one hand tied behind their back and probably one leg uh, immobilised as well I call this the Fraser effect, um, and uh, the reason why I call it that is because uh, going back in the day, we had a um, prime minister who was uh, generally considered to be pretty, you know, pretty. I was going to say conservative, but right wing. He was certainly a uh, the target of a lot of ire of leftists. And he was genuinely conservative um, in many ways. His name was Malcolm Fraser, and he uh, was famous for having basically flipped. <laughs> uh, would you, I, I guess you could say flipped his lid, but like flipped from being a reasonably genuine conservative to just a total liberal. And of course, he became a darling of the left after that. And, you know, even Malcolm Fraser thinks this way. <laughs> I mean, as if he was just uh, the, the, this gold standard for conservative opinion, uh, even in the midst of his liberal conversion. It's especially nauseating when conservatives uh, change sides like that. Uh, I always um, look at people like this, and there are quite a few people on the conservative side like this who you just can't help thinking that hey, you know, I'm, I'm just so sick of not being invited to cocktail parties. <laughs> and on this level, and uh, really, um, I'm so sick of being portrayed as a right-wing bastard, you know. And um, I just want to be loved for, for a change. I just want to be liked, you know. And a lot of conservatives are actually you know, nice people by virtue of um, believing in uh, the good old-fashioned virtues of uh, civility and niceness and politeness. They are the epitome of the core values uh, that should characterise a person with um, a conservative um, view of things. But unfortunately, it infects their um, role in the ideological struggle by effectively compromising uh, their beliefs in the face of a totalistic ideological onslaught of people with a totalistic worldview that they just don't seem to get that that's the kind of struggle they are in. And with me, the red flag goes up as soon as I hear otherwise genuinely conservative um, commentators express uh, support for gay marriage, for example, because it is a it's a complete insult 
to conservative values. The only way this thing can function is through the idiocy of leftist political theory, which you are accommodating yourself to by accepting it. A core conservative system of values has to do with the reality of men and women and getting together and having families and being the basis for a stable, uh, rock-solid family and community-based society. The only way to accept gay marriage is to accept off-the-wall leftist idiocy. And, as I always say, not even Trotsky and Mao believe this sort of stuff, or Mao may have graduated to it. Uh, and I think when I hear a conservative come out with this stuff, I think, well, you might just as well be a Trotskyite socialist as far as I'm concerned. And consider this. With the likes of Andrew Bolt and Chris Kenny, if they lived five lifetimes, X the influence of leftist ideologues, would they have just come to the conviction that, hey, I just like think that two men should be able to get married, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just really passionate and convicted about this. Yeah, yeah I, I never thought of it before. Yeah, like that would really have happened. Uh, no, this has been transmitted by um, nothing but leftist ideology. And they've been brainwashed in it. Not even leftists could give a hoot about two men getting married to each other. They're just running this as a wedge issue to screw up Western society and civilization with their um, subversive political activism. And the faux conservatives could even uh, take a little bit of time out and say, uh, oh, you know, I know I've been a bit hard on you leftists, but um, thank you guys for uh, giving me this understanding that I didn't have before. And I'm sure they do this as a way of kind of softening their right-wing image with an issue that kind of doesn't really uh, matter much to them and as a way of ingratiating themselves with these people who hate their guts and who are just going to hate them more. <laughs> uh, but they think, oh, they might sort of start to really love me now, you know. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Andrew. Nah, it's not going to happen. So they deal with leftists on the basis of these people being nice. Uh, kind of seeing in these uh, slavering, radical ideologues uh, an element of niceness that's you know, completely undeserved. These people are fighting total war and they are going to kill you maybe even physically, if they could get away with it. That is the level of their animus, and why do you pussyfoot with these people? My favourite conservative is Anne Coulter, and she gets this. She really gets it. Um, you don't compromise. You don't step back. You don't apologise. Uh, Rush Limbaugh is another one, I think, in this category. Milo Yiannopoulos takes personal animus a little bit too far but I think most of the time you know he gets it right and he gets criticized by the faux conservatives for doing that for taking it up to them on the Australian political scene I think Morris Newman journalist with the Australian uh, has got the idea possibly Rowan Dean other conservatives, Andrew Bolt and Chris Kenny, definitely aren't in that category. Definitely too distracted uh, by being nice. My favourite anecdote is LBJ at the height of the Vietnam War wanting to cut a deal with Ho Chi Minh. And Ho Chi Minh is a communist ideologue who will take out a gun and shoot you dead for what he believes. LBJ wouldn't have done that. How do you 
compromise with someone like that. You don't compromise with someone like that. You fight them on their own terms. And as I've said many times before, you're a nicely dressed, uh, very nicely presented ABC um, commentators and political uh, spokesmen who would send me to a salt mine for 25 years and not lose a night's sleep about that. <laughs> and let's not forget Richard Nixon and Margaret Thatcher and Joe Bjorki peterson who were really hated by the left. They, they hated their guts because they were successful conservatives in the Australian political context. They're going after George Pell, a very successful uh, conservative spokesman who was a cardinal in the Catholic Church. They're just out to get him because he is a successful conservative and they want to eliminate these people. In the case of Richard Nixon, I mean, they would have physically eliminated this man if they could. He was proved right about Alger Hiss being a communist in the State Department and they never forgave him, and the media was just out to destroy this man. But the real point um, I wanted to cover <coughs> was what I covered in a recent video about portraying leftists as hypocrites or engaging in selective morality. Because there is nothing but animus built into their belief system, and it's not a choice. Um, it's, it's something they have to do. So, you know, like if somebody like Madonna, um, addresses Trump supporters and says, if you, she could be the nicest person in the world, but her leftist ideology will drive her to that level because it's built into their belief system. And many of the aforesaid conservative spokesmen that I have mentioned before don't get this. And they continue to treat these people nicely. <laughs> As if they were nice people. And they may well be nice people. But you've got to understand that they're fighting a total war without any rules other than what they make up. And that is the whole thing uh, ideological, theoretical notion that we consciously choose a belief system that then translates into how the world is. And what that means is that they are going to totally demonise and dehumanise people on the other side who, if uh, they're not anti-war and anti-injustice and anti-racism, must be just much just love to be positively pro-war and pro-injustice and pro-racist. <laughs> and that's the choice. That's the, 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 the razor's edge, the dividing line. And it should be guiding conservatives in the way that they look at their opposition and the way they portray their opposition and how they deal with the opposition in the monumental ideological struggle of our time. That's all for now.